Hi, so in this video, we're going to take the practice problems on 1.2 about the PPC. Um, so there's no slides that are associated with this right here, um, but it's more going to be the, the excitement over here. So hopefully you've got your problem set, and maybe you, you even tried to do some of these problems before watching this video. Um, so the first part, part A, is actually constructing your very own PPC. Um, so the first, first thing we're going to do is start here, and we'll say... Um, those little root beer barrels, right? I don't know if you if you were into that nasty, gross candy, but those little tiny root beer barrels. And then we'll put gum up here. So um, the options, right? We've got A, point A would be 30 gum and zero root beer barrels, okay? And then point E over here would be four root beer barrels and zero, zero gum, okay? And then um, the easiest thing to do at this point is to notice that 30, 28, 24, 16, right, that's not a nice straight line. So maybe we divide this in half and we say 2 and 3 and 1, okay? And let's divide this in half and say 15. And then we're going to split that one into thirds and say 20 and 25. Now, for the first barrel, Right, that's going to be all the way right up here at point B. Now, point B is going to be just a little bit below point A. Right, It's going to be at 28. So if you even want to draw a little arrow and say 28, we could do that. And then point C, right, this one is going to be at 2 and 24. So that one's going to be pretty darn close right, right in here. We could say 24, and that's going to be point C. And then point D is going to be 16, which is going to be here. So now we connect the dots, and we'll kind of see that if we do it with a curve, that there is actually a, a nice kind of bowed out picture here. Now mine's not perfect, but if it kind of looks like that, that's kind of what it's supposed to look like. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have to be pretty. You're not going to be asked to do something like that on a test, but I think it helps you think through the idea of increasing opportunity cost. Because as we go from A to B, we gave up two gum and we got one barrel. When we go from B to C, we gave up four gum and we got one barrel. So notice that we went from two to four, that's an increasing opportunity cost. When we went from C to D, you gave up 24 to 16, that's eight. So you give up eight gum, and you only get one barrel. And then the last one, you gave up all 16 gum, and you only got one barrel. So each time you made one more barrel, you're giving up more and more bubble gum. That's the idea of increasing opportunity cost. Now we're going to label some points on this PPC. Uh, inefficient or unemployed, that's any point inside. Doesn't matter where. It can, it can all, it actually could be like all the way down here. It just has to be within the quadrant. Okay. Can't have negative production. Now, efficient would be any point on the curve. You could actually name N there, or you could put N there, or whatever you want to do. Unattainable would be any point beyond it. So way out here, point P. All good? Calculate the opportunity cost. Oh boy, I think I may have given these away. A to B. Well, when we go from A to B, we're gaining a barrel. But that's not the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost are the two gum that we gave up. So we should write two gum. If you don't put the word gum, you're not actually answering the question. So you need to put that word because it tells you it's expressed in the other thing. From B to C, it's 28 to 24, so we're giving up four gum. And then E to D, we're going to work backwards. Now it's not going to be 16 gum. Why? Well, because you're not giving up those, you're gaining those. When you go from E to D, you're actually giving up one barrel. Now, this is a point where I'm going I'm to pause for a moment and ask you to consider some question. If you're going from E to D, and you're giving up a barrel, <coughs> excuse me, and you go from D to C, and you give up a barrel, and you go from C to B, you give up a barrel, is that increasing or constant opportunity cost? Now, think for a second. It's actually the ratio that we're really concerned with. So the ratio is you gained 16 gum, you gave up a barrel. You gained only eight gum, and you gave up a barrel. So each time you're giving up that full barrel, but you're gaining less and less and less. 
So that actually still means you're having increasing opportunity cost because every time you move up the direction from E to D to C to B to A, you're getting less every time. And that means that you still have increasing opportunity cost. So here's a trick question that shows up all the time on tests, and I don't want you to miss it, right? Is it even possible to have increasing opportunity cost in one of the two? No. If you have increasing opportunity cost, it's true for both goods, always. If you have constant opportunity cost, it's true for both goods, always. So you can't have like constant one and increasing in the other. That mathematically just doesn't make sense. Now we're going to switch to part B. Now in part B, we're not going to do all the numbers and stuff, right? This is really pretty similar to, to more like what you're going to have to do on a test. Although I've had students tell me over the years that my prompts here are a little bit uh, questionable. So we'll see. Now, I don't really care whether you put the pizza and the wings on which axis. It doesn't really matter. Um, but, you know, think about hot wings and pizza, right? And we're just going to go ahead and say, I also don't care if it's constant or increasing opportunity cost. So if you want to do increasing, that's fine. Um, it would look like that. If you want to do constant, that would also be fine. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So it would look like that, right? It doesn't matter. You, you can pick. If, if the test doesn't tell you, then you just pick whatever is in your heart's desire, right? See, economics is all about choices, all about relationships and choices. And right now, we're building a relationship over pizza and wings. That's big time, right? That's a big step in this relationship. And I'm gonna say, you can pick. If you want increasing opportunity cost, do it, right? You just take care of that, whatever you feel. Now, the company buys a new, more efficient pizza oven and still uses the same old fryer for wings. Okay, so in that one, that means that we're gonna get better at making pizza, but the wings thing is gonna stay the same. So we just shift this curve kind of out. We go, ta-da, just like that, okay? Now, with this one, it says business is slow and neither the fryer nor the oven are being used to full capacity. Now, wait a minute. Does that mean that the fryer and the oven are broken? No. Does it mean that they are somehow less productive? No, it just means we're producing less. So we're actually gonna go from point A to point B. We're just gonna say they don't produce as many. Right? And so for this one, we'd say they go from curve A to curve B, but in this one, they're going from point A to point B. It's the difference between how much you're producing at any given time and your capacity. We're going to return to that idea over and over and over again. Now, on Super Bowl Sunday, the company gives no breaks, right? And runs the ovens nonstop. So we're going to start at point A. But now we're going to be unsustainable for a little bit at point B. Right? From point A to point B. And I'll put a little arrow there as well so that you can see. So we moved from point A to point B. Now, we're not going to permanently be able to stay out here at point B. It's unsustainable. It's not feasible. But for maybe for a day, we can do it. Now, the last one, the company expands their business with both more oven and more fryer capacity. Now, with this one, I've kind of I've screwed up my drawing already because I didn't really leave myself enough room to draw the shift outward. But I'll kind of try here. All right. And so it's going to shift out for both of them. So we go from curve A to curve B. So hopefully you got it. Um, I'll see you in class. Take care.